Well, let's go make some picric acid crystals out of aspirin, also known as 246 trinitrophenol. Some information about picric acid. It was first discovered in 1771 by a gentleman named Peter Wolf, who was a British scientist. He used it as a dye initially, as it pretty much dyes everything. It was initially made using phenol, as this benzene ring is part of phenol, and you're already halfway there compared to using aspirin. But, as I know, aspirin works also. From a dye, it became mostly used as an explosive, especially in World War I, but it was found soon enough that when it can, combines with metals, it becomes unstable and explosive. It's also toxic to touch or leave on your skin, so it eventually fell out of favor for TNT. I want to spend some time on the reaction, and this is just the main parts. There are other smaller reactions that occur that I did not include, but this, is, I think, is enough for this video. So we're going to start with uh, acetyl salicylic acid. We're going to add some sulfuric acid and heat it, which will give us salicylic acid plus acetic acid. The acetic acid eventually is left in solution and or is evaporated. Um, the salicylic acid, however, is then heated for an hour at about 120 degrees Celsius. And at this point, sulfonication occurs, which eventually, when it's done after one hour, yields 5 sulfur salicylic acid. And that's this right here, which is the benzene ring here. We've added a sulfur down here, which there was none there, and an OH, an oxygen, and an oxygen, also not present back here. From the 5 sulfur salicylic acid, it's cooled down the entire solution, and sodium nitrate is slowly added. During this step, decarboxylation occurs, carbon dioxide is given off, and you will end up with a benzene ring here that has now the sulfur uh, compound on this side here, but you've also added one nitrogen with two oxygen rings that comes from the sodium nitrate. This compound here is called 2-nitrophenol 4-sulfonic acid. When it's heated then at about 120 degrees again, pretty high temperature for about 30 minutes, the remainder of the ring becomes nitrated and you, use your you lose your sulfur group. So you end up with a nitrated group up top here, one here and one here. The OH was present in the beginning right here with the salicylic acid. It remains the entire time and now you have one nitrogen and two oxygens at the 2, 4, and 6 spot, which is why it's called 2, 4, 6 trinitrophenol. This final diagram here with the three nitrated groups here on the benzene ring is in fact picric acid. Picric acid has a melting point of approximately 251 degrees Fahrenheit or 121.8 degrees Celsius. For our materials, we're going to start with aspirin, dissolve it in some alcohol, recrystallize it, and eventually we'll have the acetyl salicylic acid, which is pure. I already did this part, so I know I have 15 grams. I needed to do that to find out what other measurements I needed to do um, knowing this weight. We're also going to need sulfuric acid. I know from one gram, you need four milliliters of sulfuric acid. So we have 15 grams, 15 times four is 60. So we need 60 milliliters of 90%, early 95% or higher sulfuric acid. We also need sodium nitrate. I know from that, every gram of ASA, acetyl salicylic acid, we need 1.8 grams of sodium nitrate. So we multiply 1.8 times 15, and we end up with 27 grams of sodium nitrate. That's what we'll need. We also need a hot plate to do all the heating and a magnetic stirrer to keep things moving. In our methods, once we've recrystallized the acetyl salicylic acid uh, from this step up here, uh, we're going to mix it with the sulfuric acid, 60 milliliters, and heat that to around 110, 120 degrees Celsius until all of the ASA dissolves in the sulfuric acid. We're then going to turn the temperature down to around 90 degrees and slowly add our sodium nitrate. Now, if this temperature goes up at all while we're doing this, we'll produce more and more nitrogen dioxide. So you want to keep the temp down if possible. However, it's hard to stop because it is slightly exothermic and it will produce almost always uh, nitrogen dioxide. So you just need to be aware of that and do this under a fume hood or outdoors. After that, we're going to turn the temperature up to 120 degrees for an hour. That's essentially where we were up here, where we're producing the 5 sulfur salicylic acid. And we're doing that right now for this one hour. And this step, and again, a reminder, produces nitrogen dioxide gas. Next step is to cool the solution to room temperature. At that point, you're going to notice some uh, pretty much just yellow, kind of uh, clunky, dull yellow crystals form. That is actually the crude um, picric acid that's forming. Uh, you're going to pour this into the ice water, mix it around, and break up those crystals as much as you can. You're going to filter them, and you're going to save those solids, which is your crude picric acid crystal. You now take your crude picric acid crystals and dissolve them 
in one liter of water. Now picric acid does not dissolve well in room temperature water or cool water. However, if you get enough water and raise the temperature enough, typically to boiling, you can dissolve all of these crude crystals in this water. And you want to do that, obviously, until they're dissolved or gone. At that point, you want to allow the liquid to cool. The slower it cools, the larger the crystals you get, but your pure picric acid crystals will start to form in this liquid. Next, you want to filter, save the crystals. These are pure picric acid crystals, but you want to save them wet, not let them dry. When they become dry is when they become dangerous. You also do not want to store them in a metal container, only glass or plastic for the same reason. Picric acid mixed with metal becomes unstable and can explode. I know there's a lot of information here, but as we go through it step by step visually, as we actually make the picric acid, hopefully making this stuff becomes clearer and it's not that difficult. Let's go do it. Here's my bottle of aspirin. It was brand new. I weighed it. There was 36.56 grams of aspirin in here. We're going to grind this up so we can get rid of any fillers in the coating. Done. I'm pouring the entire bottle of crushed aspirin that we just did. Once we dissolve the aspirin, leave behind the starch compounds and the binding compounds. Dissolving all of the aspirin that uh, I just crushed in around 60 milliliters of almost 100% ethanol. This will, of course, dissolve the uh, aspirin, but leave behind the starch and other binders in the aspirin so we can separate them by filtration. I'm pretty sure all the aspirin's dissolved by now. It's been about 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this down and uh, filter it. Filtering our aspirin alcohol solution. Going to take a minute. I'll be back. The filtration's done. You can see in here in the filter paper a lot of white powdery stuff, which is the binders, etc. But down here we have our nice clear solution that contains the acetyl salicylic acid in the alcohol. So we need to heat this, evaporate the alcohol, and recover the crystals left behind. I'm going to pour the solution into this Pyrex pan, which will make it easy for me later to scrape out the crystals. The heat is turned almost all the way up. The alcohol should evaporate pretty quickly, and I'll come back when that's done. Just starting to see the acetyl salicylic acid come out of solution there. All the alcohol is evaporated. I just need to scrape out the aspirin and move on to the next step. I was able to scrape most of this off really easily. There's a couple little spots here and there, but I'm not going to worry about those. So we need to weigh our aspirin, and I'll put it in a beaker and find out how much it weighs. Our final yield is 14.59 grams. Now that we have our pure acetyl salicylic acid, I'm going to dump it into this 250 milliliter beaker here. And then add our 60 milliliters of sulfuric acid. We're going to heat this to 120 degrees Celsius and keep it there for probably an hour. Be back when it's done. We're about 20 minutes in and it's turning a reddish brown. And by the time we're done, that'll become almost black. I've had it at 120 degrees Celsius for exactly one hour. I'm now cooling it down to about 90 degrees Celsius to add the sodium nitrate. Twenty-seven grams of sodium nitrate pre-weighed. I'm also going to be transferring it to this 500 ml beaker here because as we add the sodium nitrate, the uh, the solution is going to produce carbon dioxide and foaming is a real problem. So the larger beaker, I think, will help. Transferring the solution to the 500 milliliter beaker. The solution is now at 90 degrees Celsius and I'm going to slowly add our sodium nitrate.
Whenever you're nitrating something, the production of nitrogen dioxide is always a possibility. We can see the carbon dioxide bubbles forming, small amount of nitrogen dioxide, but as I add more sodium nitrate, it seems to be cutting back. Adding the last bit of sodium nitrate. Once this calms down, I'm gonna turn it up to about 120, 125 degrees Celsius to make sure all of the sodium nitrate is completely dissolved. Before I turn the temperature up, you can see the color change as picric acid is starting to form. It's been at 120 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes and everything is dissolved. I'm gonna turn down the stir and the heat. We're gonna let this cool down to close to room temperature and then dump it in some ice water or some ice water into it. As this cools, we can clearly see some very crude picric acid forming on the sides of the glass here. Now that this is cooled, we can see it's saturated with crude picric acid. This next step of mixing it with ice water is uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, the primary one is that picric acid is not soluble in water, as we mentioned. So any unused sulfuric acid or even initial uh, acetyl salicylic acid or any of the sodium nitrate that's still in there will dissolve in the water, whereas the picric acid will not. I'm going to start by pouring some ice water in here. And then trying to break it up. The yellow solution, of course, is really promising that there's picric acid. It just needs to be filtered next so we can collect that crude picric acid here and purify it next. I let this sit a couple hours and all the picric acid fell to the bottom so we can easily decant the fluid on top. Okay, that certainly helps a lot. I'm gonna start filtering this. This again will probably take some time, so I will be back when it's done. I'm just using a little bit of distilled water to get what's left in here and rinse that beaker out. All of the crude picric acid crystals have been collected there. I did wash them a couple more times with cold distilled water, ready to move on to the next step. I've started to heat almost a full liter of distilled water here. Picric acid is not soluble in cold water, but if you get enough water and you bring it to boiling, you can get it to dissolve. So we don't lose any of our product. I'm gonna simply take the filter paper out with these uh, crude picric acid crystals in it and put it right into here, into this warm water that is not yet boiling and dump them. Okay. I will be stirring this from time to time just to keep things moving. About 20 minutes in here it's not quite boiling but almost all of the crystals have dissolved it's just coming to a boil now however all of the crude picric acid crystals have completely dissolved so there's no reason to bring it to a full boil it's now time to cool it down to cool this down i'm going to pour it into this pyrex dish here once again so that we can watch the crystals form i have this pyrex dish sitting on a foam board to slow down the cooling hopefully will get larger crystals that way 
After about an hour of cooling, the very first pure picric acid crystals can be seen. Now that it appears that everything has crystallized, it looks like one chunk solid, but it's not at all. You can see how thin those crystals really are in there. So, unfortunately, only pretty small crystals formed, but that's really no big deal. It's still picric acid. So I poured it back into this one liter beaker as it will be easier to filter uh, than by pouring this out rather than out of that uh, square pan there. I'll probably use this or decant the liquid on top once this is done settling, and then I'll filter the bottom. I'm going to start transferring the top uh, clear liquid over here. This is going to take a bit of time, and I've got to watch it really closely, so I'm going to start this process. You know, boy, you can see how this can stain everything. I was able to transfer almost 400 milliliters out of here, so that'll significantly reduce the time that this filters. But I'm going to start filtering this. It's going to take some time, as it always does. I'm just going to rinse these crystals with some distilled water here. These picric acid crystals have been washed twice. I am now going to remove this very soggy piece here and set it on top of this more absorbent material. Again, I'm going to let this partially dry. All that's on here is some cold distilled water and picric acid crystals, and I'm just going to leave it there for now. It's been drying out for about 15 minutes or so. I've gathered it together with, uh, yeah, sometimes this kitchen utensil is exactly what you need. And finally, before they completely dry out, I'm going to get them into this plastic container, which has a very, very good seal on it.